Uh, my dozer's name is Natasha. <laughs> Join us for a pivotal moment in road construction history as we celebrate the legacy of T.A. Shifsky and Sons. Under the vast sky of asphalt achievements, Tom Shifsky Sr. brings down the curtain on decades of dedication with his retirement, signaling the closure of a family empire. The wheels of progress never stop, though, as they embark on a final journey auctioning their treasure trove of machinery through Purple Wave. This is not just an end, but a tribute to the trails blazed and the paths paved by the Schiffsky family. I'm Tom Schiffsky III, and I'm the owner right now, of, or half owner of T.A. Schiffsky & Sons. I have a cousin that owns the other half. They're, our dads were the sons, and T.A. Schiffsky & Sons were grandsons, and uh, we're retired. I'm Jesse Shivsky, and I'm his youngest child. I'm Tom Shivsky IV, and I am his son. We moved in here in 67 into this office, but the, you know we moved into North St. Paul in 1958, started paving in 1951, started out in landscape. PA bought his first Ford tractor in uh, 1943, and they went out and did landscaping and plowed Victory Gardens because the war was going on. That's what my dad did. 10, 12, 15 years old, they'd send him out on a tractor all summer long, and he'd landscape yards. But there was five brothers. If you want to keep your kids straight, you put them to work, That's right? It. So. While T.A. laid the groundwork, it was grandma's grit and governance that truly paved the way for the company's enduring success. T.A. named it, but I think Grandma put the foot down because Grandma was kind of the pusher in the company. Grandma signed the payroll checks. Grandma was in the office. And then, you know, T.A. was out getting work, but sometimes back in the day, getting work meant spending the afternoon in a bar. And, back in the good old days, you mean? Yeah. You know, I, and uh, Grandma would be in and out of the office and out checking the crews, and uh, then she'd say, oh, you know, we didn't get paid for this job on Friday. I can't give you guys payroll checks. You'll get them on Monday. And, well, what do you mean? Well, she says, one thing, they'd show up on Monday because they know they were getting their paychecks, and the wives were happy because they had money for groceries because if they got them on Friday, they all went to the bar. So, you know, that was the old days. That's what you did. Nobody messed with Grandma. She had her part. They all knew her. They watched out for her. She had a 1960 red Cadillac, and they could see that thing. They call it the red alert. <laughs> and like I say, she watched over everything, but she passed away in 1964. People came here. They stayed here. It's a different atmosphere out there now. You know, we, we retired a lot of people out of here that were here for lifetime careers. They were good, faithful employees, but we were faithful to them. Launching an asphalt legacy in 1958, T.A. Shifsky and Sons fostered a familial fortress of ambition and unity in North St. Paul. And then in 1958, built the asphalt plant in North St. Paul, Minnesota. And I had an uncle that was in the gravel business, had a farm out in Lake Elmo, and uh, there was gravel on it, so he bought a crusher. You know, it was all kind of a family affair. Everybody, all the family worked for each other. You know, like you say, back then we probably had 20 employees, and out of the 20 employees, 15 of them were related. We were known around because the name Shifsky is not very common. In 1967, T.A. passed away, and the sons took over. You know, we, we built the business then. And then in 1991, uh, Jerry had passed away, and his family had gotten bought out of the business. So Bill and Tom were the only two brothers or sons left in the business, and uh, we started buying them out. We had six months to go to start buying my father out, and he passed away of a ma major heart attack. 
And uh, so David and I have been in charge since 1991. You know, we've grown every year. It gets to the point where there's an end and we all came together and said, it's time to retire. So that's what we're working on now. From laying driveways in the 50s to founding Crushers, Inc. in 95, T.A., Shifsky and Sons mapped a road of relentless innovation. And then in 1950-51, again, that's before I was around, I heard the stories that they started paving and they start doing driveways at these housing projects where they were doing the landscaping because they couldn't get anybody to come in and do the driveways. But, uh, but I've known people that have come in here and wanted their driveways redone that said nobody else could do it but us for them because grandpa had put it in for them and their driveways were like 35, 40 years old. And they said, you know, my neighbors had two, three driveways since then. Yeah. We want you to redo <laughs> ours. And, you know, we weren't really doing driveways at that time, but we've been around for a while. We started Crushers Inc. in 1995 because we were hiring so much crushing done sure. that we were keeping a guy steady. So my cousin Dave and I decided to uh, start a crushing company, which my father didn't agree with because at that time, we were buying out Dave's dad. And he had us locked in that we could only spend X amount of dollars on equipment for the company. So we just decided to start another company, go and do our own crushing. That's why Crushers is separate okay. from Shifsky. Gotcha. We bought a crusher. My dad was in or on vacation down in Texas in Brownsville. And I figured he was far enough away that when he asked me, he said, uh, what's going on up there? I said, well, we bought a crusher, and he said, you better not have. <laughs> he came home, dropped the suitcases in the kitchen, got in his pickup, came in here, and we had it sitting out here by the plant, and he went right through the ceiling. I said, well, don't worry about it. Dave and I bought it. Yeah. Well, he ended up becoming a partner and uh, actually hired the guy that was crushing for us to come in and crush recycle, and ours sat out front there until the guy got busy and then he says, I got to pull out. Well, then we had to use ours. So he's get the thing out to the per pit. And we started timing, make, right? start yeah. making gravel. Yeah. So that's, that's how Crusher started. Yeah. And then we just grew from there, start doing our recycling. Yeah. Tom Sr., a lifelong operator and visionary, crafted a legacy with iron and asphalt, steering the company's evolution with experienced hands. All the equipment I, we've got, I've sat on the seat and ran it at least once because I'm an operator. I've been in the operator's union for 48 years. Mm -hmm. Whoever didn't show up that day when I was younger, that was my job. So I ran paver, I ran loader. Motor grader, I'm not so good on. My, eyes, my eyes weren't the best yeah. for that. In 1977, I came in here because our plant loader operator had retired but I started running loader when I was 12. Started running Ford tractor when I was six. So, right. you know, I've been been on equipment most of my life, yeah. so. Well, you have to stay modern to stay in business. And that was the, the hardest thing back in the day is you used what you had and you, you made it work. Now to stay in business, you have to have new iron to keep up the pace. Sometimes your old iron that's your favorite does a good job, but it's a little slower and you need the newer iron. And that's why we always kept replacing and building iron, you know. How did you how did you acquire most of the equipment? New or used or just a mixture of the uh, both or? a mixture. You know, I'd I'd go pull diamonds out of the rough, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I always knew what we needed and we always paid for our equipment. So I always knew what we needed. But if a deal came along on something that I know we'd need, I'd buy that and move the, the piece we were looking yeah. for to the next year because <laughs> we always fixed what we got so we didn't have to yeah. worry about upgrade. You know, we always put new brakes in the trucks every fall. 
we can't have, we can't afford to have trucks go down in the middle of the summer. You know, it costs too much. So we just, it's always been a practice that we've done that. Pre-buy all our tires a year in advance, keep everything pretty much the same size. Then you can keep a set or two in stock. Yep. And when it's hard to get, you got your. Yeah. That's why you'll see a lot of stuff that's the same, like Bobcats, where you got all the same size. Yeah. No, every year we do that because we don't have time for downtime in our work season. We do that with a lot of our equipment around here, even if it doesn't need a service in the middle of winter, it's all service it. So that way, when we get rolling, the shop's not buried. And same with like our pavers and stuff like that. We rebuild them every two years, whether they need it or not. It's good for the maintenance. Well, you buy good stuff, you treat it right, it'll treat you right. Nothing worse than a guy on this side of town needing a jackhammer on this side of town and spending an hour over and an hour back. Yeah. Sometimes it's just cheaper mm -hmm. to buy six hammers so every crew's got their own and they always got it with them. Through asphalt and integrity, T.A. Shifsky and Sons built more than roads. They crafted lasting relationships with communities and local businesses. We had a lot of great customers. We did a lot of stuff for, uh, like you say, these home builders. And we did a lot of work for municipalities and uh, uh, we had a lot of customers that bought asphalt from us. What was cool is a lot of family, local family businesses would do business with each other. And like even in our town here in North St. Paul, there's a lot of local businesses that, oh, we need this done, there's a local roofer. We, you know, hey, we need a roof done. Okay, we'll do the roofer. Hey, we need our parking lot paved or patched. And we had a lot well, of really good, we awesome had a customers lot, like we that. We have a lot of repeat customers. Yeah. Adventure at Shifsky's. Cub Scouts commandeering loaders, proud parents, and a mom taking the wheel. A memorable day of unexpected turns. I had <laughs> his whole Cub Scout troop here that and day, we I ran loader day. with every one of them. Yeah, because you took one all One would get out, the dad would come up, yeah. stand him up there, and he'd come in, sit on my lap, and he got to run. I think I built three new operators that day out of 10 <laughs> kids. Because there was a couple that did, they didn't want to get that, out of that seat. They that thought that was great. Did any of them work for you after that? No. Week, so. That wasn't even the best part, though. The best part was, is afterwards, he told all the parents to go, so which ones do you want to do this? And I remember seeing people's, you know, dads, dads were like, yeah, and there was a couple people, you know, kids there with their moms. And the mom was like, oh my God! <laughs> we had we had one mom so say, I want to drive. So I <laughs> stood there and she, she thought that was the greatest thing ever. Born into asphalt, the Shifskys grew from grass cutters to machinery masters, with every generation leaving its mark on earth and family lore. Like I say, I was born in this company. I know how to move dirt, I know how to pave, know how to do everything. You know, not patting myself on the back, it's the school of hard knocks. I've been through it. My first memory of working in the business Let's put it this way, I worked in the business, I cut the grass around the office when I was 10 years old. I started doing that and then I was, you know, shoveling around the plant, you know, where the leaks were under the conveyors and stuff like that and doing that type of stuff. And then, uh, you know, the loader operator back then, people taught people at a younger age now we worry about somebody getting hurt back then. If you were a farm kid or a business owner's son, you learned early. And then I start running the loader at 12 years old. I had run Ford tractor out at my grandpa's farm at six years old. You know, would plow the driveway, the snow, and cut weeds with it, and you know, that type of stuff, grade the old gravel road. David, my partner, started. He's five years older than I did. He started with Grapp out there, and then when David got his driver's license, he moved into full-time here, but we got a brand new truck in 1971, and uh, we had to haul some black dirt. So they sent me over with the loader to load black dirt. I was 15 years old in the loader, out on the job site by myself, loading black dirt, and my dad was out of town and uh, he came back. My uncle had said, you go over and do this. 
And of course, my dad became furious. He said, you know, he's a little young to be over there doing that. And Jerry, my Uncle Jerry said, no problem. He said, I told him if he scratched that new truck, he was gonna buy it. From then on, it was, oh, he knows how to do it, just go do it. But we all started at the bottom here. We all started with a shovel in our hand and worked our way up. My first memory of working here is a little before I worked here, but I'm gonna still count it anyway. I remember being about four or five years old in the plant shack, uh, standing on Randy's chair, who ran the plant for, I think, 28 years before he retired, about 10 years ago now, and sitting there helping him mix asphalt. And when the truck was done, you press the air horn. So at like four or five years old, I got to go in there and I got to hit the air horn. And I know Jesse did the same thing, and my other sisters did the same thing. And that's where it kind of got started for me. And from there, I started mowing the grass and shoveling the tunnel out. When I think I was 15, I went out on a paving crew for about four years. I paved with the guys and learned the mainline stuff and some of the small stuff. And in between that, I worked with our crushing spread. I did a lot of the processing of the oversized concrete. I uh, eventually kind of took over the crushing side of it. Uh, on top of that, I've been kind of running our fleet. I enjoy both of them. I enjoy crushing rocks. So that, that was fun for me. And you know what kid at you know 18 years old doesn't like getting on a heavy piece of equipment and doing something, especially when dad doesn't know because he gets angry just like his dad got. Same. At, you know, out at the pit, he wasn't always out there. So it's like, oh, I need to take care of this. I'm gonna go get on that piece of machinery and do it. You know, there's enough room out of the pit, so you, you know, it's harder to get in trouble. And luckily there was no place I got stuck. I am the youngest. I would say I definitely remember nagging my dad to bring me into the office because I just loved hanging out in the office. And he'd have a nice leather couch that would just lay down and then I'd run up front and some of the girls would bring computer games and I'd sit in the back and then they would teach me how to like scale in trucks and then we still up there have like where we used to sort all of the tickets. And so I just remember running around doing all of that. What was your first operating experience? I bet you don't remember. Um, driving the loader and almost hitting a pile. No, oh, you had the mini excavator at home. That was on my own. I always thought you meant <laughs> when I was a kid. That's true. We almost tipped over, but we didn't. So. You did what? Yeah. Oh, man. In the barnyard. Yeah. He was teaching me, and then he was like, you almost tipped over. It's like, well, I didn't. But we definitely did loader ride. They all got taught ride. safety at first, that first is thing. So. That is the biggest thing. Yeah. Safety a, is a little, little bit. I just kind of got on stuff when no one was around. But safety is important, so it's take your time. You're better off starting off slow than going fast right away and hurting yourself, so that's what I always did. I rolled, yeah, I rolled our driveway when in 2004. No, it was 03. 2003, I rolled the driveway. <laughs> of course, there was two lifts put on it, so I didn't get to do the wear. I just got to do the base lift. Because if I screwed it up, then it was no big deal. Yeah, but... 2003, you were what? 13? 14? No. Be I would 10. be 10. 10? Yeah. 10. 93 yeah. Yeah. to 10. 03, yeah, 10. Yeah. But I did a good job according to Spanky, so. <laughs> Spanky was our roller operator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Was, it's you know, 14, funny when 50. you're in a family <laughs> business that the guys that work for you and have worked for your family for years and years, you tend to listen to more than listening to your own parents. Oh, that's 100%. 100%. true. Or I, your own family I learned members. more from guys that learned from him than I did from him because he's my father and honestly, <laughs> he said it himself. If it is old man went at it, I and I go at it. <laughs> well, we go at it, but when it's over, it's forgotten. Oh, yeah. That's that's the next thing in a family business. If you're going to be successful, you can't hold a grudge. You just got to go at it, say your piece, and turn around and say, all right, let's go to lunch or do whatever. Well, yeah, it's, it's just... more like you go over there, get that done, and I'll get this yeah. done. Great. And then yeah. we go, we come back. Looks good. Looks good. All right, next project. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Tom Jr. talks about selecting Purple Wave Auction for their expansive reach and expertise to spotlight their prized machinery on an international stage. Uh, since I've been kind of more in the auction side of thing and buying and selling all that recently, you know, I went through all sorts of companies and looked through them all. And ultimately, you know, there was a lot of people involved in it making the decision. You guys had done one of our competitors last year and another competitor, I think, two or three years ago. How, how things seem to go and having talked to them, because uh, both of those competitors, we actually did their carryover work and they had said, you know, this is what we did. And, you know, being in the paving industry, it's sometimes hard to find the right customers. And uh, everyone kind of concluded that uh, you guys did a good job on getting all of that equipment out there and, you know, showing it to, you know, the whole country and every, you know, even farther than that. and. You know, because, you know, paving equipment is a very kind of specialized area and it's sometimes hard to market. So it's, we've seen that with a couple of companies and it's like, well, we got really good equipment and we don't want to see it go for not what it's worth, you know, because we take pride in keeping up with our maintenance and keeping things running because we only have six months out of the year to get our work done. So it's, you got to keep things running in that six months, otherwise you lose a lot of time, so. Well, and I think Purple Wave has the outreach worldwide. I think that brought brought a lot of attention and price seemed to be fair. Things have been pretty good. I think uh, working with everyone on both sides, I think it's just been, you know, two teams came to one and everyone's been able to, you know, get things figured out. and. We have issues, we're able to sit down, have a meeting, say, all right, so these are the issues, what's going on? Okay, that's the issues, how about this for a fix? Perfect, done, and everyone just seems to be able to work together well, and, you know, I'm impressed by even, you know, like this, you know, sitting down, talking with us about this, going through the equipment, doing all that, you know, it's a little more personal in the sense of, you know, we're not just, you know, it's a retirement sale, so it's, you know, we want people to know that, you know, it's not like, you know, we got a lot of good equipment and stuff like that. So it's definitely, you know, to be able to say that is kind of awesome versus just showing up at an auction somewhere. Oh, it's equipment. You know, it's like, no, nah, it's cared for equipment. And being able to work with you guys on that to be able to show that is really awesome. A tale of snow, a tractor, and a six-year-old's determination. Tom Sr.'s childhood plowing snow under Grandpa T.A.'s watchful eye. Grandpa T.A. had a Ford tractor at his house. It was the first one the company ever owned, the 1943 that he bought. And I would go down to see Grandpa, and it's snowing like crazy. You know, we're out in the country. There was no kids to play with. There was no nothing. Go down and see Grandpa. Grandpa called and said, come on down here. OK, so I go down. And he'd come up and he'd say, okay, go out and plow the driveway. Okay, well, there I was, six years old, plow the driveway on the Ford tractor, get on with the back blade, and I'd plow the driveway. He'd go and he'd look and he'd say, it looks good. He says, now go home, plow your own. Okay. So I, <laughs> I go up and my mom is in the house. I back up to the garage door and pull one pass out. Oh, T.A. must be up here plowing the driveway. She walks out and she looks out the window and she's going to wave and it's me. And I wave back and I'm backing up for this garage door and she just freaks out. She comes running out of the house. She's, what are you doing? I said, I'm plowing the driveway. Well, who told you? To I says, Grandpa T.A. told me to come out and plow the driveway. She says, that's close enough. That's close enough. You know, I'm 10, 12 feet from the garage door. Come on. So I make two more passes. She says, that's good enough. You take that tractor back. And I thought, now I'm mad. I got this 12 feet. I got to shovel that. I'm six years old. That's a lot of snow. So I take the tractor back down to Grandpa's. And I go down there, and I'm kind of crying a little bit. Grandpa goes, what's wrong? I said, she won't let me plow the driveway. Well, let's go, he says. He puts his big old parka coat on jumps on the tractor and I jump on the fender, you know, down the road we go. We get down there, he backs into the driveway. My mom comes out the front door. He says, uh, 
She goes, well, thanks for bringing them home. He says, I didn't bring them home. And he says, I, he's going to plow the driveway. He says, well, he said, come on in. He says, you make me a highball. So they went in the <laughs> kitchen and made Grandpa a highball, and I plowed the driveway. He comes out, he looks. Yeah, good job. You know, it's about this far from the garage door. You know, but them old clutches on them old 9N Fords, I was only six. I had to stand up with both feet on the clutch pedal to hold it in to shift it. So, she, you know, she was a little nervous with that. Yeah, he got on the tractor and home he went. She just was shocked. There, you know, there, well, then from then on, okay, he can do it. So, as soon as it snowed, I'd go to Grandpa's house, and there was only four houses around the lake, and they were relatives. So I go plow everybody's driveway at six years old because we had a snow day, you know. We had a snow day, so I'd plow with the tractor. I wish my grandfather could have seen me run that loader yesterday. Yeah, from that little tractor to that loader. With a fondness for cars and landscaping, Tom Sr. approaches retirement, marking the end of an era with heartfelt nostalgia. You know, I uh, collect cars and I have a few uh, that didn't get driven hardly at all last year, maybe 10 miles. I'd like to do at least 10 miles a day. We do sponsor a car night uptown here and we have a night up there where I bring my cars up there, but that's the only time I got them out of the garage last year. I build rock walls at home. I got my own skid steer. That's uh, an understatement. I like mowing grass. You know, I started mowing grass. I'm gonna end up mowing grass. Uh, it, it's what relaxes me. I get on my lawn tractor and I mow 13 acres, so it takes me a while to mow it and I get my headset radios on and I'm just jamming along and cutting grass and when you get done, you look back, it looks so nice. I've already outlived Grandpa T.A. and my dad and whatever. I want to retire. I've wanted to retire for the last five years. You know, I'm gonna miss it. As we bid farewell to T.A. Shifsky and Sons, Purple Wave Auction is honored to have been chosen to navigate this transition. Their story, a testament to decades of hard work, family values, and pioneering spirit, leaves a legacy that stretches far beyond the asphalt they laid. Thank you, Shifskys, for allowing us to be part of your remarkable journey. May the roads ahead be as enduring as the ones you've built.